Hi everybody and welcome to Crip Monkey Paints and you are just now getting the cameras so you missed me and Ty both jumping out of our skin thanks sawdust you got us both really good with that quacker <laughs> um so today we are back to world building and on the planes and I will be working on a board game uh called nemesis which i have some of these guys down here in front of me and i will kind of go through what i've already done with these guys while tyler goes and grabs himself a coffee yes yes the guy's doing this shit oh look he did a non-screen bad screen there we go <laughs> okay so these guys are actually already done. They're ones that I worked on before on a different stream from like forever ago. And I literally have not done any more on this board game since. And there is a bunch of pieces in this game. And these models are beautiful. I highly, highly suggest. I have no idea what the gameplay is because I've not played the game. I've only been painting the pieces because it's also not my game. Um, but the colors that are behind these guys are legitimately the only colors on these guys. So everything was primered in just black, like dish, a like dish one. So everything just flat black. Then I dry brushed the colors of purple, the evil chrome, all metallics, uh, elven armor and royal purple so like the purple i took from one angle and the blue i took from another angle and the gold i well evil chrome i took from another angle and it gives it this like you can on this one you can see the blue is over here the blue is right there the purple is right there the chrome is right there so as you twist you see all the different colors and you see black even you know coming through on other areas but and then in here in the mouth is where i used Basically, I just mixed red and beige to make a nice mouth color and then white tefers. But basically, I did all of this with dry brushing the different colors from different angles, and it gives you this color shifty sort of look, which I'm extremely happy with and I want to continue working with. So we're going to get more of the pieces out that need to be painted, and we're going to continue that process now there is also the queen she's phenomenal i love her love her love her there's babies coming out from underneath um so she definitely will even have some of the this like really bright blue because if you look at the picture in the side or on the underneath the brachiosaurus you can see that kind of color is is brought through so I will be making sure she has some of that and we have a whole lot of doors for this game and the doors are battle damaged you can see it's literally cut completely through yeah um so i will be having fun with painting those and i'm gonna put my hoodie on because i'm a little chilly sorry guys i'm hot yeah we all know you're hot baby we can see you oh. <laughs> um so I've got multiple doors to paint, and they are, some have the same sort of damage. Let's see, let me find one that's, yeah. So that the damage varies even. You can see it's dinged up down there and a hole through. So the damage varies for the different doors. But I think I'm going to start on, I got a hair on start on the doors just because of the, uh, kind of get me, it, it's the easiest thing to paint, so kind of get back into the swing of painting with this theme in mind. Let me see. Now that I'm finished with my project, you've given me more ideas. Yes. Yes. So that is the point, Sawdust, is always having the next project in the back of your head. And while you're finishing your current project, your next project is on the print. Project is on the printer. That's the whole point. And Tyler is now back with us with a wonderful cappuccino as well. That's right. We haven't had these in so long. I'm kind of enjoying it. They're the ones that you put um, 
you put them in the the Keurig, you know, and then you have the little sprinkle of little pa extra packet the, of the powder, the powder that you put that in there with it, and then it makes it all foamy and awesome. You know, it occurs to me I didn't check audio, so I hope we're sounding okay and kind of yes. even. So well, I did check it with Isabella, but obviously Isabella and you are not the same person. So no. So sawdust, how do we sound? Even, nice and loud enough. I'm too loud. He's too loud. I need to shut up. I'm always too loud. <laughs> it's my thing. <laughs> that's why being on the show with Jake is so great because he's just as loud and sometimes louder than I am. <laughs> yeah, but that's kind of the, the downside too is like you think he's too loud or you think he's louder. He gets booming and you get quiet or you get booming and he gets quiet. And you guys are like never even. That is the thing I have when I'm distracted in my own thoughts. I kind of start to get quieter. <laughs> I'm not laughing at you anymore. I'm laughing at jackass in the back there. This is LOL. Just kidding. You sound great. Thank you. <laughs> so I am going to pull paints from that new set that I've just got in of metallics, including rough iron, which I think would be amazing on the doors. Yeah. Some do Sorry. I, just have to do I need to find my palette. Oh, that was super I'm loud. So sorry. I I, I'm, I've got to keep taking part of the blame on that because I've, I've got my boom because I simply don't have room over here to put a mic in front of me anyway without the boom. So I just need to get yours on the boom so everybody isn't. Reaching for ibuprofen every time we stream. <laughs> I, well, I mean, it doesn't help that I'm a klutz and I keep knocking everything over. <laughs> okay. So I am going to start. I'm going to get all my doors. Because there's a bunch of them. Get all my doors up here. Because I do, I mean, they're, they're spaceship doors. So you wouldn't have one made out of one material and another made out of another material. So realistically, I want them to all have the same paint job, then different, um, a different look for their scars sort of thing. Okay, that's all my doors. You, I'm like kind of saving the queen for the last because she's so awesome. So she's kind of like my reward. I'm like, yay, I finished. Now I get to paint my baby. So, Okay. I do have sound some. gate and compressor. That's how Jerry Springer does it. Yeah, I am using some filters <laughs> to gate the top and the bottom. Okay. Uh, but I worry that I, 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 I worry that I'll end up turning them up too much, and we'll have to, you know, only speak at the same volume all the time. So, to somebody who doesn't understand what the hell you're talking about, that sounds really weird. Like just reading that sentence, I'm like, okay. I don't know what any of that means. Because <laughs> you said sound gate, and I'm thinking water gate, and I'm like, did we do something funny? <laughs> <laughs> I have no idea. Mini painting gate. Yeah, I mean, I'm just like, I don't, I don't really get it, but okay. Uh, wow, what is this? That's part of my... Oh, I see, okay. Because everything gets flipped. I'm like, what is in my view? I, I do that same thing too. I'm like, okay, so if you, you know, like, I'll be like, if you look over here, wait, that's no, I mean, I'm like, I'm over here is what I want to point at, but I can't seem to move my finger in the right direction. Oh, let's see if I can really make a mess of this. Yeah, you know what? I need to just, I just need to leave it alone, I think. So this is actually the same board that I use to paint my little crabbies, which turned out amazing. And I love them. So I'm literally just going to stick a couple of my, because I can't, I can't paint them this way because I wouldn't be able to get to anything. So I'm just going to stick them like this. And we might find out very quickly that I'm just going to say, screw that and hold them. But we'll see, shall we? Mm -hmm. So Ty, where are we on the plane? Uh, so state of the plane is pretty simple today. One is just an apology. I haven't gotten notes out on Discord yet from the last two times we did world building. Uh, I marked them up pretty good, so it should be pretty easy to put out there. I was going to do that this morning, and let's just go with I didn't get there. I was slacking. How's that? But uh, to be fair... 
You could have done it yesterday, except you were getting something pretty awesome down on paper yesterday. So, so that's that's the second thing I was going to mention is we did start to write yesterday for the first story, um, which we will. I think this is the one we're going to make just like freely available to everybody. I think so, just to kind of introduce the the world. Um, yeah, and I think us it'll... and everything else like explain more of the texture that we're looking for and the color of the world so to speak um an easy way for me to czar it up and make sure that people see what what we're intending to do here right as we're creating so that's the only two things i actually have on state of the play um i was going to mention on an aside though too that the sawdust the the stuff you shared in discord for the star wars stuff really cool i would like to go back to an earlier conversation that i was having with your wife some of these are <laughs> oh shit hello mr wacky stuff I hey mr wacky built my mother effing coffee <laughs> um sawdust you were saying that i gave you unrealistic expectations of your capabilities and i would like to refer back to said photo and say nope and Mr. Wacky stuff, speaking of capabilities, that was so quick, the way you turned around that uh, Demon Hunter mask. Man. I was like, I was talking to Izzy about that mask, and I was telling him, I, I'm like, you know, I'm pretty sure he just had it already done. He just lied that he didn't know what it was, because, damn. I was thinking it was like the next day you had it up and done, and Mr. it seemed like it anyway. Mr. Wacky stuff is actually playing D&D right now, so he's not watching, but... You, you can watch the video later where we give you such great accolades. <laughs> Go kill stuff. Uh, he, he said specifically, he said, playing D&D, hope that got you. <laughs> <laughs> yep. <laughs> but, uh, yeah. So we didn't make an announcement yesterday. I hope that doesn't affect how many folks jump on day to CrowdForge, but we'll see. We'll get what we can done anyway. Yeah. So yeah, so we started, uh, I mentioned before the character, excuse me, that this first short story that I'm working on is going to introduce uh, two important characters. One is Tara Olds, and the other one, which I have not started writing on him yet, but is uh, Rex, and I don't remember his last name, actually, which is terrible, I guess, but. He's imaginary. He won't, it won't bother him. He won't be offended, no. Right. Both of these characters... Uh, well, they're important characters. I'll leave it at that. I won't go beyond that. I don't want to spoil things, right? Right. Um. So, yeah, we've got the first... The rough draft of the first scene is written. What else have we talked about then? Uh, so, this, this first scene is pretty quickly... It's giving you an idea of scale of the world. Not a full idea, but a general idea of scale of the world. It introduces the land ship. It introduces the dog ox. Yep. And uh, our giant jackrabbit creature that we talked about in a previous um, crowd forging stream has a name now. Hopper Jacks. <laughs> And uh, with that, a food is introduced. I talk about uh, eating hopper jack jerky. Well, and also just the way, without, you know, really going into any detail or anything, just the way you wrote her process. I'll say it that way. The morning process? The morning process. You introduce the... The security, the, the of security, it. the anxiety of getting up and getting your day started is not simply let me get a cup of coffee and go sit on the front porch. Right? No, you don't do that shit. You might want to go sit on the front porch, so to speak, but uh, <laughs> there's some steps you got to take before you just swing a door open, right? Yeah. So that I think that tension is brought in really, really well. It's it's a dangerous place to live, and and that's hopefully what I I'm showing there. Yeah. Yeah. Um, uh, what else did we talk about there? 
I think I think the rest of what we talked about there is oh the twin the twin stars again yeah, it's a rough draft we're still uh, in Discord I'd like people to to maybe look at the where is where did I put that in Discord in general or um I don't remember because I saw it pop up and then I I zoned back out again because I was in the middle of doing oh yes uh in Kethar general in the plain crowd forging category if you scroll near the top you'll see we talk about the two dancing suns so uh those are two things that i've got open for people to crowd forge on in discord um we have a, a little bit of interaction going on there i think ghosty came up with both of these name ideas but we're trying to name there's six moons around cathar and the the suns or the stars that heat cathar there's twin suns that are you know they're further away from the planet than our sun is so it it ends up being nearly equal and if uh, i remember right and i may be wrong here but if i remember right um the twin sun thing is actually more common than our our system the way we're set up oh you would know that probably better than me from watching all the astrophysicist documentaries and stuff i like them especially uh neil degrasse tyson i can never say his name right but i love him pretty good neil degrasse tyson thank you i always get very close i just call him neil because neil is awesome anyway so so if if you scroll around near the top on that you'll find a little uh post i did for astronomy where i'm i'm hoping people will share their ideas for naming the two stars for this system and uh naming the six moons so far what we've got is uh submitted as Yggdrasil for one of the suns Yggdrasil being the uh the big tree in uh Norse mythology the world tree oh that's a good one Mm -hmm. I like that yeah I like that one maybe I mean it seems like the sort of thing we as humans would name some big idea even if it doesn't become the name of one of these stars and then uh we have one moon suggestion which is Elysium which I also like that that's that's fun too that yeah. obviously they're gonna they're gonna bring some of the old earth ideas I, when I, they're naming these things I that's think. what i like about that idea is the of we would because that's what we do you know uh let me switch screens here for a moment do, do, do. hopefully this is muted it makes me want to name one of them ragnarok yeah maybe one of them's coming down someday and we know it huh um Sada says okay so back to the idea that there are steps to be done before you open the front door in polar bear territory if you are in a low populated area you need a cage around your door wow polar bears learn that they could camp out on the roof and get a tasty breakfast same vibe it it is so I'll, I'll talk a little bit about uh about this bit because I don't think it ruins the story one of the tools well not I'm sorry, only that, that just scared the shit out not of not only that but this this is on task actually i know i haven't mentioned it yet I'm, I'm hoping we get some more folks to come in and help us out but uh the plan for today is to talk about the land ship because in this sort of thread of thinking uh i added two things that i hadn't actually i mean It might have crossed my mind, but obviously I I cemented it by putting it on paper last night. Um, A periscope so that you can see near and it's tiltable so you can see at a low angle around your land ship. Um, And also mirrors, which you use with the periscope so you can see the mirrors on the corners of your land ship so that they're angled so that you can see those blind spots. Uh, the, The first rather crude thing which i would you know kind of line up with this idea that you have a cage around your front door the whole place is a cage the whole structure is a cage essentially but that there's these slots these peep slots is what i'm calling them uh on on the the sides all all four sides that you can see out and kind of near you and uh, those are just two measures that are used before you know you you sort of open the door 
Um, but yeah, I think that is a perfect buy because, excuse me, there's there's lots of polar bear type threats. Yeah, I Some mean, even it, worse. I mean, if you think about it, it realistically, you know, dinosaurs were big because everything else was big, mm -hmm. right? And this and that. So <clears throat> you've got all of these big giant things and we come to this planet and we're now not the dominant eating force. We're the tiny things. So, yeah. I'm sorry, I'm really not going to be a whole lot of help for a little while because the polar bear thing of, like, just hanging out on my fucking roof waiting yeah. is... Mm -mm. So I think it's interesting that, that two of the things I've added are just for that sort of thing. So you can see, without leaving your structure, you can see what's on your roof and what's around it and looking for blind spots. Um, and, uh, and, of course, the slots so that you get an almost in your face view of what might be standing right there by the door and by all of the walls um so yeah that's actually what we're planning to to talk about today is this exact sort of thing you know um i think that there's going to be a lot of nuances to something like this you, you you think about you're living in this big metal box that doesn't have windows and stuff windows would be a weak point um so you're gonna need certain kit certain gear that is gonna help you survive in here and i'm not just talking about security i'm i'm talking about survival in general if, if i know that there's a fireplace in the land ships and surely that's how you not only get heating but also cooking and stuff like that so if we have ideas about that mm -hmm. about storage about Anything to do with living in a big metal box. That's what I'd like to talk about today. So, <clears throat> land ships. So, there, there are really two main kind of land ships. Aside from you can have one or two story in general. I mean, certainly maybe there's people that have much more extravagant. I mean, essentially they're still going to be living in a big metal box, but... You know, I could see maybe a buyer's place almost being the mansion version of it. Maybe, uh, well, anyway, larger, for instance. But <clears throat> but your size limitations, I mean, if you're going to make it bigger than the size we're talking about, which is, for the most part, if you look at your main living floor, it'd be about 25 by 25 square feet. Um, and we'll just, to give you an idea of what they might look like, these two types. We're going to talk about a, a single floor first. So you can imagine your main living area is 25 by 25, just a box with a, a main door coming off <laughs> on one side. Um, if you're facing the front of your land ship, it's usually going to be on the left side is your main entrance doorway. Um, somewhere in here, you're going to have your heating slash cooking fireplace or pot belly oven or something like that um and then if it is just a single then you've got your eating living space and bedroom it's just all right there however many people are in this land ship and then off of the front of it there this is where i was going to say there's there's kind of two kinds probably the most common kind would be that you just have an additional box uh, off of the front of it that you can open up and enter from the main living space, but it's essentially the barn where the dog oxen live. And it's a usually a 10 foot by 10 foot box that sets like a nose on the front of your land ship. Now, the second one being that you're still probably just got a 10 foot by 10 foot box for your dog oxen enclosure, but that some people will build the main living space out further on those sides so that instead of having like a box with a smaller box it'll just be one big box from the outside and then those spaces on the side become you know more sleeping space or pantry other kinds of storage right 
Uh, Sada says, or a furry looking object that is spring loaded in your land ship, you can launch it so that predators around you give chase and reveal their presence. That That's is a really, really good neat. Point. Like a, 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 a rabbit decoy per... kind of. Like when you set a, a, a hair loose at dog tracks, you know? Uh, can you make the text a little bit that area wider for me please oh so because i can't I'm, I'm struggling to read over there uh that's a little better a little bit more room and i'd be happy let me get um, my notes open i actually actually haven't i knew this is what i was going to talk about and i still hadn't even created a section for it <laughs> no i think that's that's a really good um idea that I, I like the idea of the decoy it's reminding me of something oh hawk training oh yeah because they use those little furry balls on the end of a rope mm -hmm. um so i'll let you get that down then i have a question and maybe it's we haven't got there yet it might be the answer um, decoy launcher. I am just going to copy and paste your notes this time. It seems way easier to me. Oops, not like that I'm not. <laughs> yeah, I like that idea i think that seems really clever even if it's only regional like we know in this area something lives so we use this and that that makes to. sense that it would be that way too you know mm -hmm. yeah even though the land is similar i mean especially smaller creatures are going to be fairly regional i think yeah and there is a reason that i'm lining these up like this so over here is where I started. So I'm setting them all down. And as I finish getting this first coat done with the dry brushing, I'll start back over here and go back down the line with my next step. So, um, okay. So you kind of mentioned the first floor and you said that, you know, we've got living space. We've got this, we've got, you know, that, where is the, space where you're storing all of your tools or that is that in the barn where's the space where you're manufacturing or converting this i mean that's part of of this is you know do we dry the berry out to make it last do we make it into a wine are we powdering it what are we doing with this berry or does it just you pluck it you set it on a shelf and it just lives i i think that needs to be developed but that's sort of aside from the the ship the tools however well but see that's what i'm saying is that would be in your ship right you would have a working area no, to deal with I, i'm kind of no i kind of see they're building other structures probably in the field since they have security mechanisms there see and i keep getting that you keep talking about that but i imagine and i, I that I, that's my problem my fault is i keep imagining like here's my house and I'm traveling along and then I never go back to that same spot because I'm keeping moving. But that's not what's happening when you're farming. No, for the most part, your land ship gets you out there. And, and then you said it. Your family will use yeah. the land ship to get out to wherever you're going to farm. You find a good place to sort of park it. And you may move it again or your family generationally you may move it again later on let's say your farm grows so big and you're like you know what we we want to move the land ship out to the center area of the farm so that you know we're, we're kind of on the end here or something like that maybe that's just bad plant planning for your planting maybe is what i'm describing but right okay but in any case there, there could be a reason why you might want to move it but for the most part it's to get you out there and to get you back and the rest right. of the time while you're there is to keep you safe from okay. big bad so creatures. It does make sense that you would have another building for your manufacturing of of said plant. Okay, never mind. Yeah. Um, um but but the tool shed thing is something I've thought that 
there might be this common thing where that you have, so you've got the, the box on the front for your um, dog oxen enclosure, the little barn area, right? But maybe on the tail that a lot of people will build a little three foot by three foot or four foot by four foot tail on, on the back of it. That's really just a tool shed. Yeah. Um, I think one of the early drawings that I scratched together, no, I don't draw well, <laughs> but at least to get the idea across had that tool shed idea on it too. So you had the 10 foot by 10 foot on the front and on the back of the big box, you had a little, I don't know, three or four foot by four foot kind of enclosure for, for that sort of stuff to hang. You're going to need to be able to put tools somewhere. That's a good idea. I mean, even just coming out and going off the plane, you, you have tools. This is a big mechanical device you're sleeping in. Yeah. So it's going to break down or it's going to get stuck. Or you need lots of, you need the tools that you would be required to do pretty much anything with it because yeah. you're not going to call AAA to change a tire, so to speak, right? Um. So what else? In I would the basics imagine of this that what well, well oh, sorry. oh sorry go ahead you talking about tools or well going back to rooms I would imagine that you would have a processing kind of room a you know next to your kitchen because if you're killing this big animal you're gonna want to process that meat and make it into jerky but I don't want to process the meat and the the whole animal where I am cooking. I would want that separately. Maybe that's a, another building that's in the field somewhere. Potentially. It could be. Yeah, I'm just... But no, it wouldn't. You'd want it attached to the house, too, because of this, the fact of... And maybe it's a piece that you can attach later. Because think about it this way. If you're coming in, you're going to have to kill game to eat meat as you're getting in. You're not going to be able to pack in enough. Yes. And you're not going to be able to pack out enough. You're going to have to kill on the trip. I wonder, you know, something like that, you think about, uh, not to get too grotesque, I guess, on a stream, but you hang a deer, for instance. Right. Maybe they have poles on the outside of the the, the land ship, specifically for that sort of reason, to sort of quickly field dress things, and okay. then they get them in. And then, like you're saying, you'd end up with probably a, a jerky, I think, is a big deal, so they're going to have smoke houses and stuff like that that they that build be... separately around... Right the place but they're, again, they're not they're not building to be besieged by the way they they're expecting to always be able to eventually walk out the door but you also i mean it, it wouldn't necessarily have to be attached but you would want to have that smokehouse with you on the trip in and with you on the trip out i don't know you don't think they'd want to smoke their meat on the way in? I mean, you're taking 10, 20 years to get in and 20, 10, 20 years to get out. So the, the, the thing before we try to glue too many things onto it, remember the idea of it being 25 by 25 is pretty much the standard is because of how where they are technologically. So when you start attaching too many things on the sides or anything like that, now you've got a wheelbase that has to keep moving out and it's going to get harder so, to move these <clears throat> things. What about... Um, so think about specifically uh, RVs, right? Where you've got them, you can take it off the big screen, baby. You've got an RV where you've got the sides that pop out, right? So what if your kitchen is built that way? Where you have a section of your kitchen that you can push out when you're set. That We're going to be here for a few weeks. We're going to be here for a couple of months or whatever. You know, here's a good camping area. Let's stay here. Let's stock up on meat. We push that that section, that smokehouse out of the kitchen wall or whatever, wherever it's attached to. And you can kind of continue, you know, pull it back in for when you're traveling. And yeah, maybe that sounds it's, like a great space saving kind of way. Well, the same reason they do it in RVs, yeah. right? It's to get it down the road nice and cleanly, but then you can have the living space when you're stopped. Um, okay. Sada says, if you are in a steel enclosure, a fire can, can keep you warm, but what about summer months? How do you keep cool enough to survive and yet not be vulnerable to attack? So... 
This might take a little bit of research to find out if I am actually right about this, but the land ship is a double hold. It's a double hold structure. So my hope is that my hope, and I, I think this might be a thing, is that the internal uh, wall structure giving that air padding between the two walls, the two skins, between outside and the inside living space, is that that provides a way to sort of block out a lot of the heat. Um, but then also there's venting and, and stuff like that. That being said, if you've got some other idea that gives them that sort of natural HVAC sort of thing, especially when it comes to, to cooling, heating, like you said, as long as you have fuel, heating's fairly easy, especially considering how, you know, the the metal around the fireplace, <laughs> even if it's lined with stone Excuse or something, me. the metal around the fireplace is going to absorb and kind of radiate that heat as well. Um... So yeah, that's good. I like the idea of maybe doing like the extendable walls. Can you imagine the dealership for this place? Like, we can add these extendable walls for you and get your kitchen on the fly. <laughs> um, and also having the customizable aspect of it widens, you know. Hey, you want your ship, you know, cheap and on the fly? Here you go, you know? And then you've got the people who are wanting to get those big custom-built ones because they're, you know, they're in the money already. Yeah, I think uh, at least the idea is to have some limitations because of the size and the weight involved. Let me yeah. move on with that a little bit, I guess. So your standard one where, like I said, you have about 25 by 25 on your main living space uh, and then 10 by 10 for your dog ox enclosure. And then upstairs would be similarly 25 by 25. Uh, though, again, you know, maybe somebody who's added options or whatever has built it out to go above the dog ox and enclosure. So the dog ox and enclosure only needs to be about 10 by 10. Because uh, even though the dog oxen are, are, you know, they're not big as a cow. They're, they're fairly large. They're about four and a half feet tall by five and a half feet long. They're just super, super strong. And they can just kind of plod and walk at a normal walking speed for us. And they can pull that house. It only takes the two of them. But I do imagine that somebody has paid extra for engineering buyers especially because they're super wealthy that buyers have paid to increase the size of their land ship and maybe it takes a team of six dog right. oxen to pull theirs or whatever but um building on the standard one right now right i think there's still some some cool stuff that we can pull off uh so we already had oh my nose is bugging me sorry periscope oop that i spelled wrong oops yeah okay periscope the keep slots those are already introduced corner mirrors All right. So I don't know, I may, and maybe one of you guys know about the the keeping cool and what sort of stuff. Yeah. I, I kind of think about, it, like, in Greece, how they did the, the underground things, and I don't know how well that applies, but that these vents it can even maybe be open and still be relatively safe, especially during the day if they're around the roof lines. Uh, because in, in Greece, they'll do these like partially underground homes. And then at the back of the home, like a, a tube coming up so that, and then they'll paint it white in there. So the light 
makes it it lights up the back of their house and then the airflow that occurs there because they'll open up a front door or something and then it's it's pulling it through or pulling it down i'm not sure which um well and that's what i was kind of thinking is along those lines of having like shutters that are you know metal but slits to where you end up with a slit like this but you have five or six in this section where you can open them and you can get a draft going through the house yeah. that way and if you have those slits and then you have something up you know like a chimney that's opened you're going to have this the air coming in from underneath and going up so you have that suction going through that house so that was one of my questions was is have we kind of discussed what the the typical weather is like because if it's like a desert where it's you know cold at night and and hot during the day then heating the house up during the day and letting it chill off at night you know if you've been able to store enough heat in the house during the day sort of like another like we watch a lot of building shows because buildings are amazing um and there was this one house that was designed and it has this huge concrete pillar in the heart of the house and it has all of these windows are aimed for catching the sunlight and centering it on that concrete pillar and all during the day that house is collecting all that heat into that concrete it's heating it up and heating it up heating it up and then by the time the night falls and everything starts to cool off the pillar is now releasing that heat back into the house and it it warms the house all night long so is it something that we can kind of do that or is it you know it's mild in the day and mild at night you know it's got harsh winters you know it's so so the bulk of the plane would be similar to <clears throat> our great plains just out here in the middle of the united states okay um seasonally too so that's not to say they don't get hot days obviously and it's definitely not to say that they don't get snowy days but the, the most extreme weather would be, you know, at the north and south of the the plains. I say the north and the south. We still have to do some research on how we're going to direct weather, sunrises, like you were talking about, and all that sort of stuff. But one piece at a time. Um, the sawdust adds, my thought would be lower vents angled down with a wet, thin membrane. Upper vents angled up, so air flow is moving from the heat oh i like that a thin wet membrane too that's that's very clever i think that would be part of these vent the vent system yeah i like that idea I have lost my ability to see the chat over here. Okay, I got it back. Let me look. Let me do this. <laughs> I got him! That's awesome! Damn it. <laughs> Whose idea was it to put those stupid sounds on there anyway? Don't know. But our fans love him. Oh, dry. Ruby. I like that. That makes a lot of sense the the wet membrane the you know some yeah. sort of a even if it's just cloth or something right that they have to keep wet somehow um or maybe that ground being at the ground level you're get catching moisture somehow or something like that and you're just catching the dew yeah <laughs> Yeah, seasonally, the only thing like that, the story that we've started so far is very early spring. And I mentioned how winter is still hanging on and still trying to throw its 
cold dead fingers up around you in the wind <laughs> um so i like that So we've got the decoy launcher. I think that's going to be fun too. That's going to be a lot of fun to play with. Well, the RV style. Because, I mean, sorry. No, go ahead. I was going to say, because realistically speaking, I mean, that's, it's a simple enough mechanism that that might be the first thing you, you teach your kids on. Okay, now, you know, Bobby Joe, it's, you know, it's your responsibility now that you're five years old to, to launch the decoy every day. You know, yeah, I kind of see that guy as like a rope that you can keep. It springs it out there, launches it out there, and then you you just wind it back up. Yeah, like a like a harpoon almost, except with a ball on the end, right? And yes, I just named some random kid Bobby Joe. But, you know, that kind of gives me that Old West feeling, so. I don't know if you can tell, but basically what I'm doing is going through where there's scratches and damage, and I'm taking a bright silver and kind of highlighting those scratches so that it looks like we're down to raw metal rather than that. Or maybe their claws are, you know, what's left this mark behind. But I definitely want to highlight those marks. With regards to the name you came up with, Soda says, better than Louie Lou. <laughs> and now... I've got a song going through my head. Um, but then I also am taking these bent areas. And so we started off with, where is it? Here it is, Evil Chrome. I'll lay it down so you can see kind of the underneath. And then what I did was I got out this, uh, here it is, bronze weapon. And you can see one is slightly brighter than the other so this was what we um dry brushed all over everything and then i'm taking this brighter one and doing it in the the areas where it's been bent back or bent in or like on this side you can see that it's been kicked from that side so on this side i didn't add any highlights but on this side i added some of that um uh, true cut or weapon bronze to kind of make it look even more bubbled up and bent. Now I'm going back to doing the same thing over and over and over and over again. And now the song's still playing in my head though. Just saying. <laughs> All right. <laughs> I like my little doors. Sorry, I was looking at it on the camera. <laughs> So, so far we've got some sort of a decoy launcher, which I think is really clever. You'd probably have more than one, maybe on each side or something like that. Yeah. The RV style wall so that you get an extra room out of it, whether it's for food processing, a kitchen, both. Um, certainly space in this structure is going to be used for more than one purpose. Yeah. Like every every square foot is a multi-purpose. <laughs> it it kind of makes me think about the fact that we've watched so many programs on home buildings and tiny homes and all that. I'm like, all of that's going to come in. All of it. This is why we watched tiny homes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that is essentially what it is. It's like a really big tiny home that you got to have to drag with your big bulldog looking beast of burden. So I just had a thought. So each one of these doors, I think most of them anyway, have this little square up here at the top. What if we made that red? Like, you know, it's reading or something. Oh, yeah. We've got green. We've got red. I, I want to stick to metallics. We've got this tainted gold, which almost looks like a green gold. 
we could definitely play with let's see that one it's like the doors that have this have it the doors like this don't have it so i'm almost thinking i want that to be a shiny glowy color i think so that's gonna be fun give it a little pop of color so is it green or is it red is it stop or is it go we have to decide that we don't have to decide right now with all those claw mark claw marks i'm thinking stop stop <laughs> <laughs> all right so that's that something uh soda says i would imagine that during the day when you were traveling you and your family would be out of the house that's exactly right uh one drive and another person stationed on top of the house with a large batiste ballista or harpoon for enough protection to give everyone enough time to get inside yeah and driving isn't even driving is uh you think about an ox cart you've you've got something either commands or a stick that you hold to sort of direct your beast of burden and then they just pull it in that direction essentially they're yoked um but yeah that's how i imagine is that you know it if you're in the house during the day the house is completely opened up and as much as it can be i should say um and you're working on whatever you're working on but it's it's definitely like farm life even while you're traveling it, everybody's got something to do throughout that time period yeah driving watching the beasties yeah that's that's exactly right i mean that's there's no steering wheel or anything that's definitely a I kind of liken them to dogs, so I think it is a command-based thing, you know? Yep, yep. Um, but yeah, let's actually make some notes about that. Or during travel. Everyone has jobs to do. Uh, one person is directing the dog oxen, while most others, most others are on the lookout for trouble, and some may be working on food prep or cleaning yeah um uh, so this is beasties wait that also helps solve the cooling system of the house it almost gets hot only during the day it could be uncomfortably warm but survivable at night yeah it, it seems funny about that is it's we get acclimated anyway. That's one of, I think, the advantages of human beings that, yeah, you know it's cold, but you can stand it. But if you uh, have been living in Louisiana, for instance, and then you travel somewhere where it's snowing, everybody's like, oh, yeah, it's just Wednesday. You might be like, this is terrible. How can you possibly live here? <laughs> well, I mean, that but just... But you get used to it if you hang out for a while, you know? Yeah, I mean, that just happened to us. I, I you know, we took the, the dog for a walk and... It's out in a t-shirt and jeans. I'm like, oh my God, this weather's amazing. We should open the house up. I can't, you know, it's like, it's the best day ever. And Ty looked at the, you know, the weather app and was like, you know, it's 46 out. I'm like, holy shit, you're kidding. Because you were used to it. I'm like, it felt amazing out. I'm like, it's the warmest day we've had in forever. See, another point to that, uh, that I could build onto what you're talking about, Sawdust, is the, the weather is... Uh kind of think of the plane as almost like an ocean of course i have land ships out there but most of the time there is at least a breeze and there might be areas where you have a doldrum again the ocean right uh, where it's not as breezy in those areas but that most of the time in most places on the plane there's a there's a breeze and that it's ranging from comfortably breezy to I'm sick of this wind <laughs> kind of weather. So even if it's warm, we know that helps, obviously, if there's airflow going on. 
Um, although I remember being a kid going, man, this wind is hot. I don't even remember where I was, maybe in Texas or something. Um, I have a question then. Okay. Is, you know, we've, we've got all this wind happening. Are we utilizing that for power in any way? What kind of power? Because it's not like electricity. I mean, some might be figuring that out, but I wouldn't say that We're not there most yet. people okay. are not. Yeah. Well, I mean, then do we have any sales to help pull along? Or are we just solely relying on? I kind of wondered about that, too. And I would say your average one is just pulled by these dog oxen. But if we get to developing those big ones, I can kind of see where... You only have six dog oxen, but you've got sails on top of your land ship, maybe, or something like that. Not not so much that they're they're never going to move it on its own, but just this sort of little tiny help for the beasts. So then what about when you're stationary, having built yourself a windmill to do some work for you? Yeah, I don't know. I, get, I That seems reasonable to me. I don't know what work specifically like mill work or something maybe for food processing or yeah i mean there's but again that's i don't see that as in the land ship that's no that's what i'm saying gonna... when you're stationary are you going to build yeah i think you're gonna have like barn barn structures and stuff uh where you don't want to sleep in there just in case something gets past your field securities but you know it's generally find a store grain in there or something a little bit of grain that you might have for your subsistence okay um soda says yes after talking it out the heat factor is not as bad as i thought it could be power a grain mill yeah that's i think that's a good idea even if you're not growing a lot of grain you got to do it yourself you're gonna have to have something whether it's a prehistoric quern where you're doing it all by hand or yeah, of course, I think they've gone plenty far enough to be able to build a mill. Uh, we should do an other structure section so we don't lose some of these notes. Huh? Yeah. Now I'm kind of separating the doors as I finish what I, the basic painting because, like, this door, you know, it actually has, like, to me, that almost looks like a an eye reader, you know, an optical checker. So... I think what I want to do is make that tiny little dot in there, the red. And then when I do these doors up here, I'm going to do that screen green. And then I've got some different colors happening. So I'm kind of separating the doors in the two different types as I finish. So I've got one little stack that I'm sliding over here and the other stack I'm sliding right there. So that I don't have to search each door to figure out which one I'm doing with what again. So, Sawdust has a great idea where we're going to utilize wind, like you're suggesting, for the land shift. I think this is going to be important just to help with that airflow because you figure on most of them, uh, the way I see it on most of them, you've got two big double doors on the front of the enclosure and then you've got one main door and that's it. But a fan, especially placed well inside of your main living area, that's wind powered from the outside, can help circulate even more. You know, maybe it's sort of off center, ceiling away fan. from right a ceiling fan away from the, uh, not ceiling away fan. from the front and away from the main door out, right? So that you're kind of pushing air in and out around that area. I was take, talking about we we specifically have an attic fan. So we can open up all the windows, turn on the attic fan, and it sucks all the air up. So even if there's not a breeze outside, it creates a breeze by sucking it. See, that one, I wouldn't want to do something like that because you, you've you got a security problem. Then you've got another weak spot. Even the doors themselves, if they didn't have to have doors, they'd probably figure <laughs> to teleport outside just to be safer, right? Yeah. But uh, something like that is going to be another door or a big yeah, slot to open in order to use that. But uh yeah, let's add that to the to the land ship, I think, huh? All 
I mean, it's a ceiling fan. It's not an attic fan like you're talking about, but I still think it... Oh, I still think it works, yeah. I understand. I mean, I would rather an attic fan, but I, you're right. It is definitely... Well, and also, I don't think it needs a whole lot of help because it's usually windy. It's usually got a, a good breeze going on out here the way I see it. So much so that we talk about the acclimation that you have. Of, this is what it's like here. And then you go somewhere else and you're like, this is terrible. I imagine going through an area that's like a dull drum would probably be. I would imagine if, 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 if I live out on the plane and I'm in a windy spot and then I travel to one of these windless spots. Or if it's a weather based windless time of year or something that at first I'm going to be like, ah. It's so nice not listening to this constant wind. And then shortly thereafter, I'm going to be like, it is miserable here. Because <laughs> you get so used to things, you know? Yeah. Um, and that kind of opens up a little bit of competition and like thievery of, you know, this area and this area are growing wise equal but this one is more comfortable to live in so maybe yeah. you come over and you kill the family that's been there for 20 years because you're like fuck it i want that yeah and, and we have to remember too that we're talking about all of the plane like i, I think where you farm agdal that that's probably all just breezy and windy and stuff but the doldrum areas, I wouldn't even say are there. They're years away from there. Oh, okay. Because uh, remember, geographically, where where the Agdal is grown is a plateau on the plain that only takes up a relatively small portion of the plain. Me and these bottles of paint are fighting. And these doors, I, they are just jumping out of my hands. I missed a couple of these little screens. That's interesting. Then maybe you have uh, small mechanical fans at the vents to sort of force air flow. I'm sorry about the noise with the paint bottles, guys, but I, they're pissing me off at the moment. I have to move maneuver things here. Because I'm trying to separate my doors by... How they look, but I can't because I keep running into the stupid paint bottles. Oh, maybe we should do that blue. Yep, I'm, I changed it. I'm gonna do that blue up at the top. The azure magic. That's what I'm gonna do. I really like that. Sorry, hold on. I'll do it again. This I, one. I wasn't paying attention. My apologies. I'm going to do that up there because if you look at the picture behind Ty, that's like a really good shot from the game and you can see it has those, those tones, those colors. So I want to bring that color into the door as well. So I'm going to use that on the door up there. Okay, that's it. That one... Oh. Stupid door, stand upright. It's like it stands up perfectly fine until I touch it, and then it's like, I don't know what I'm supposed to do because I'm a jerk. <laughs> Is that what it says? It's what it says, and it's exactly how it sounds. <laughs> I like the small fan. I mean, I like this idea that it's. Like recreating an, an HVAC system almost, you know? Yeah. That's kind of fun. I imagine that Terra would not have these things anymore. No, it's I don't just got basic vents. Yeah. Because the more elaborate they get, the more of a luxury item it is. And realistically speaking, if you had to, you could dismantle gut those sort of luxury features that you might have on your ship to make do with what you have to make sure you survive 
during travel or yeah and whatnot you know sort of thing okay. i think that is a better setup for me to get my doors out of my way when i'm done with them cute oh my god i hate these doors right now <laughs> <sighs> i mean i like these doors they're fun as hell these little tears and rips and claw marks the details that they put into this is just awesome i mean they even have like you know this scratch is going down and this scratch is going across and i mean they're like it it's like an animal walked up and was just clawing the shit out of the door trying to get through it's, it's really well done it's fierce yeah So I like that. That's cool. That's good stuff. Um, well, while we think about other things, I'll describe the mobility because I know I haven't really talked about this before. Uh, maybe to you, and, but not on stream. Uh, so mobility, that I keep saying drag, and they're not exactly drug. I mean, they are because they're so heavy, but they're not on skids though so they may have skids for helping them to cross streams and stuff like that their main system of mobility is in the center of the main living area you have a big crank system um that i'm sorry that's on the side well, i guess it depends there's a crank system somewhere in the main living area where they'll have a big handle that they're cranking around and this will raise and lower your land ship with its big wheels. Um, these wheels, whenever you get to wherever you're going to place your farm, you'll lower your land ship uh, so that it's setting flat on the ground or however you level it up, right? Um, and the wheels retract up into the... the um, between the two hulls. Um, so essentially it's a very basic mechanical system that they drag them on these wheels. So uh, I say it could be in the middle, it could be on the side because I could see where some people would put their, have their, their crank built on the side so it's out of the way, the middle of the floor. But then in my early imaginations of this land ship is that you'd put it right in the middle because that's... You'd, you'd reuse that thing coming up out of the floor. You'd build a table on top of that, you know. So this is the main sit-down-and-eat spot. Yeah, that seems like a really good... Um, we offer, you know, plenty of options sort of thing for the sales salesmen, you know, the, the building contractors for these things of, you know, we can place this wherever you'd like us to place it. You know, we can put it right up your ass. <laughs> okay. I'm off on that one. Sorry. <laughs> Soda says for the drug doors of the land ship. I'm thinking of a door of a naval vessel. There is a wheel that you spin to lock the door with rods of steel that uh, move into the walls. This takes the weakness of the hinges out of the picture. Yeah. So. That might actually be better. The way I'd imagine it was just a simple metal hinge latch, kind of swinging latch that comes down. Um, and maybe that's just a lock, actually, an additional lock, rather. But there's actually, I keep saying the main doorway. The main doorway has two doors because you have a separate door for the inner skin and the outer skin. Just sort of that added safety and then even when you it's almost like a little air gap it, you can't you don't walk necessarily in between the hull skins that's boxed off uh at the doorway but that yeah you have a way to open it from the inside and then you have another way that gets open from the outside um but i like the spinning lock thing that's yeah easy to use right it's both easy and difficult to use for the same purpose of like a grown-up would be able to walk up and just throw the wheel 
Uh, but a child would not be able to get the oomph behind it to actually get turning and just walk out the house. And the reason I did like a little cringy thing is because while Ty was reading that, I immediately imagined some animal that could mimic the sound of a crying child. To get you to come out. Now, of course, we're describing these land ships and in their form that they're intended to be i think you'll find whenever i introduce tara's land ship that it is not this comfortable this well kitted out <laughs> because reasons she's had to sell some things off so yeah i like that idea Yeah, these things all lend to it being sort of a ship on the land, too. That it's been built this way for security reasons. Um, but that it's modeled off of that sort of... Those sorts of principles of being able to lock the door this way or whatever. I think that yeah. lends, lends to that idea very well. Um... That brings me to, like, the bedrooms and having, you know, hammocks is the main form of, of sleep because you can do, like, in a ship where you've got layers of hammocks. Yeah, and maybe that saves a lot of space, too. Well, that's, yeah, that's kind of my point. Um, you could also, having that be your main form of, of sleep, you can also make it to where that room is dual purpose. Okay, no one's sleeping. We unhook the hammocks, they fall to the side, and now we have a big open area where we can work or do whatever we need to do. You know, maybe you unhook three or four ham hammocks and you can get to the upper side where you can, you know, the left side where this is where I'm going to be posted for today's travel, you know. And I can move quickly because the hammocks are out of my way. It's an open floor plan. Kind of sticking with that submarine feel as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah, incidentally, that's kind of how I imagined. So I, last night thinking through, not writing about it, just, just kind of thinking through the buyers have these armies with them. And that's how I kind of imagine... The those area. soldiers you know they're they'd have their own land ship that they're pulling behind that are the barracks and uh this puts a great visual together where you've just got stacked up and rows of hammocks yeah so i think on you know those old like whaling ships and things like that they used to have them at, at least two you know yeah, actually, my and it's not hammocks, but my mind goes to the uh, World War Two. Excuse me, those transport ships they were using, where it was the built-in metal bunks, or or maybe they were bolted up metal bunks. Yeah, but they went, you know, at least three high on those. And you could still potentially take it, and you know, like push it up against the wall and bring your hook down and that holds it up against the wall. So yeah. either way, there you get a go. There's two more options for you. Yes, my love. I was just coming to see. Ah, Izzy's here. Basically, Izzy and I hung out all day. Yes. Well, most of the day yesterday. And then, uh, then they came over here. You know, we were at her house for most of the day. And then we came over here and we're like, okay, you know, it's time for you to go home and you're going to go to bed. And the, and the rain decided, no. The heavens opened up and I was like, I really don't want you driving in that. Because not only is it raining horribly, that sounds like hail. And then we looked and like, nope, that's just the rain, heavy rain. being pelted. Cool. So, nope. 
No, there's a couch, honey. See you later. Oh, yawning. I tired about going to sleep. <laughs> just stop it. I wasn't tired until that one second just now. So funny. Okay, I'm going to turn this over to you for a minute while I step away, if that's all right. No, 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 don't leave me. I'll be right back. Okay. I'm pretty, not, pretty much still just doing the exact same thing. <gasps> Izzy's coming to join. Yay. Well, Izzy is sitting here so Izzy can talk. Hi. But apparently, they don't want to turn the beard can man on. No. Because they don't have a beard. They feel like it's, you know, it's a lie. So what do you think so far, kiddo? I think they look cool. I'm... So many words. <laughs> so good. So good. Hi, Sawdust. It's Uncle Sawdust to you. You know, when I don't even use that when I'm talking to them, any of my aunts or uncles directly. I know. I don't know how I managed to fail that <laughs> so miserably, but like none of the kids call any of their aunts or uncles by uncle or aunt. It's just well, their name. That's it. When we when we talk about them, we use the aunt and uncle, but talking to them, it just doesn't, it seems redundant. It isn't. We did it when we were kids. I admit that, but I've got No, you guys it. really didn't even do it then. I mean, I did it when I was a kid. It, it got to a point where I'm like, this is just redundant. I don't want to say aunt and uncle and then their name because it's just. You're a stupid head. <laughs> well, at least we know that it's not, you know, preferential treatment from one over the other. They just don't do it for anybody. <laughs> and, you know, it's, it's kind of one of those things where when you have a kid, you're supposed to say, you know, like, I'm supposed to call my mom, mama, and I'm supposed to call sawdust uncle sawdust and i don't i just call everybody by their name and you know i say mom and well <laughs> i say mom and i say dad and i say you know amy and i still call momo and popo momo and popo that one i actually was about the only one that i really switched <laughs> over to doing <laughs> that was funny um but it was an effort because when they were little, little, they were saying, you know, mom and dad. And I'm like, no, 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 that's mama. That's mama, not mom. That's mama. So I did switch that one. But that was a lot of effort. If anybody says anything, you know, you got to read, right? Yeah. Okay. I'm doing details, which is not an invitation for quacks. Oh, okay. So Sawdust asked me to re read something that dad didn't read on. Um, Dawn, the thing you said about a predator that can mimic a child's cry, well, that's, that idea can happen, but from the view, viewpoint of the plane before humans, the predator actually mimics the sounds of pups of the predator's main prey. They use the same sound at, at your land ship, which alerts you to their presence, but it weirds you out thinking about how long it will take before they learn to mimic a human child. Right. It wasn't bad enough my way, was it? <laughs> oh, you can stay there? Yes. You can babysit him. Okay, you have to start typing then. You got to take that note down. Okay. Um, Make sure you put it in the right spot. Is it going under? I am washing my brushes more than I normally do when I'm doing things like that. Because I'm using a fine tip brush and using just a little paint, this top bit of the brush will get hard so I need to make a new one caked with um with paint and then you'll start losing your nice fine tip of and getting your details and getting that nice smooth line that you want so what is it being called predator i don't know we don't have a name yet okay so unnamed predator or something like that sawdust is kind of expanding on the the Mimicking the child 
cry. Uh, yeah, I was going to come back and make a note on the creature for that, too. So what he's suggest suggesting is that there's a, a creature out there that before there were humans, you know, that was its thing, was it would mimic the cry of a pup of whatever its prey was. So now it still just sounds like that pup cry, but, you know, you're sitting there going, huh, I wonder how long it's going to take before they start mimicking a child crying. Oh, that's brilliant. Nope. Creepy as fuck. I like that. Just made it worse. You're making it worse, and I like it. <laughs> you would, wouldn't you? Oh, yeah. Aren't you done typing yet? I'm making sure it's, uh... Sada says you're welcome. <laughs> <laughs> oh, shit! <laughs> that got me a little, too. <laughs> that got me a lot. <laughs> so... Yeah. No. So it looks like we have six of each door. Let's see. I got Izzy inside with that. I <laughs> Oh, I feel better. <laughs> Sana says, yikes! Yeah, you forget I've got points sitting over here, too, just like you. I <laughs> uh, probably don't have as many points as you, but I got points. Uh, Sana says, we need to take you away your button. <laughs> I'd gone for so long without dropping one of these damn things. Uh, Sawdust is 8K. Oh, yeah. Uh, well, now I'm down to 2.3. I don't know how many points I have. All right, Bella Wella. Hand oh, it back I have over. 70. Sawdust. Got me again. Son of a bitch. Izzy's like, I got points too. Oh, I got 70. <laughs> I didn't think I had many. All right, so this is a uh, mimics the sound of a pup. And its main prey, when humans arrive, it uses the same sound to attract them. And the humans begin to wonder when this predator will begin to mimic the sounds of human young children. I think I think it's too cool of an idea. And it's just going to be a thing they, that it happens. And that it still works sometimes. Oh, man, that reminds me. I didn't even log on the Gamers in the Unknown. So that to I use can get points. points. Not, not to use, probably. But, oh, yeah, maybe to use, actually. Yeah. Just wait till, wait till Sawdust is concentrating deeply on thought. I wish we could see when they were, when somebody was typing, like in a text message. <laughs> so you could like, interrupt them while they're concentrating on that. Yeah, exactly. Oh, we have to make a video today, Dawn. Oh, I shit. Forgot all about I forgot all that. about it again. Dying. Uh, the, I, I'm not even sure what they're calling it. The Midwest Game Fest. The online. online or, yeah, I, I don't, I don't know. know. They're doing an online thing this year, earlier in the year. Next weekend, actually, isn't it? I have no idea what it is, honestly. So we have to get a like commercial video together. Yeah.
lost my button again. Stupid phone decides to go to sleep on me. Okay. <laughs> All right, so we have notes on that crazy creature. Did you get rid of the rest of the eyesight? I didn't get rid of... Anything that's that, right? No. Okay. <laughs> called How scrolling. We... Well, he pushing keys before scrolling, so I was suspicious. I would assume it's save. I didn't even type anything there. You're just paranoid. <laughs> I thought you deleted stuff. Not... I probably just saved is all you saw me do. I didn't see the keys because I heard the clicks. Mom hates my keyboard. I love my keyboard. I, well, to be fair, I hate uh, Sunbrand's keyboard as well. The mechanical. Which, honestly, I I, I think... Damn it. Sorry, the clicky keyboards. It's the mechanical keyboard. I love it so much. And it lights up, too. Um, I, I think that... That's just a good thing you live on your own. <laughs> <laughs> I think he'd be dead. Uh, I think that Sunbrand changed and doesn't have the mechanical keyboard anymore which they really love but i think because of they got new headphones and they were doing a conference call and they realized that the new headphones picked up and overrode other people talking with angie's type or with sunbrand's typing so somebody else would be talking and she would be trying to take a note on it and it would make it to where they couldn't hear that person talking anymore it was it was not good <laughs> that's pretty bad yeah yeah those doors are coming out well oh i thought those were tombstones no they're like doors on a ship they're know. spaceship doors spaceship. that makes a lot more sense <laughs> You have a very weird brain. I have two very weird parents. <laughs> Fair enough. Would you go look in the top drawer of the white rolly round thing? And there is metallic paints. Okay, I'm going to try to get through this this time. Okay. We have talked about so far uh habits during travel a decoy launcher for probably lots of predators in general that this might work for right uh rv style sidewalls to basically have rooms that retract i think that's great thank you the periscope the peep slots the corner mirrors i mentioned those those are actually in this first story uh, slitted vents, and we kind of developed on that a little bit now, together, uh, with Sawdust's well, help with the, the wet like membrane and stuff like that. Uh, we talked about wind power and how it can power certain things. Fans are the only thing we've talked about, but I'm sure that we can come up with some other things. Get that baking mixer going again, right? <laughs> uh, doors and how they might be similar to a naval vessel and use those spinning handle locks which i like that idea a lot yeah i do too uh we've talked about sleeping and how hammocks are probably because they're cheaper i would say are the and easy to get out of the way uh the main beds for people uh but we also talked about maybe some beds might fold down from the walls like in the world war ii ships for instance and of course, we also talked about that weird mimicking creature and other structures that we'll need to develop on how they do that. I kind of imagine them just being stone buildings. Yeah, I would think so because metal is, you know, a little more scarce, that sort of thing. So, We've yeah, it's been... not going to be easy to, you know, you don't have a mining operation. You, yeah. You probably have to trade for those sorts of things because you're focusing on your farm for most people out there right uh but yeah i kind of see them the like stones would be easy for them to pull they're probably while they're working on their developing their fields they're they're pulling out rocks and small boulders and stuff like that anyway yeah and 
can say so. And as, as far as writing goes with those sorts of structures and how, oh, we don't, you know, we don't need to put that much effort into the security of those things because they're in the field. <laughs> Think about how much fun, from my perspective, it's going to be to, oh, you got caught outside the land ship while something bad's happening. Hope you can survive the night in a barn that only has three walls. That's when you uh, put your head between your legs and kiss your ass kiss goodbye. Your ass goodbye. <laughs> yeah, that could be fun. I thought about would it be interesting to have someone spending the night clinging to the inside of a well, for instance. Might feel more secure there. Yeah. Basically, you're just hiding, you know, but maybe you can pull it off. Maybe you fall. I got out a pewter gray out of my other metallic set to go on the floor. That looks pretty good. Yeah, I want the floor to look very different. Soda says you and I have a different idea of fun. <laughs> Do we? Uh, Azumi says dad's a whore, not obviously. Yeah. And this is Crip Monkey. Um, yeah, that's looking good. Definitely need to get these back to Mike anyway, so. Yeah. Well, I knew, I mean, this is, what is that? Nemesis? 12 door, no, oh. 12 doors that we're going to have done here in a few minutes. Oh, yeah, I guess I can share that, too, for anybody that would be interested. I can get a link for where the Nemesis board game site is. I'm adding a little bit of a different gray to it because this is very dark so i added that and i'm kind of mixing them together because it was a little too dark and i was already kind of mixing on the palette which i just only just realized a second ago that my palette is completely off screen so <laughs> well but now that gives us kind of a, and I'm not thoroughly mixing it because, you know, it's metal. So it should have different shines. And let it mix itself where it wants to. The thing that I really like about most of these metallics is even if I um, coat them with a, a matte varnish, clear coat, whatever you want to call it, they still stay a little shiny. Some of them stay very shiny. Others stay just a little shiny. But it's still pretty cool. I just realized I need to go around the edges of the bottoms too. Uh, let's see. So, Sada says you could look to prey animals and see how they handle defense and or hiding and do your best doing what they do. Right, like uh, big cats hiding in the grasses of uh, the African plain, that sort of thing. Uh, the doors are giving me a 2001 a Space Odyssey vibe. Yes. I'm going to take that as a compliment. It, it, I've never seen it. Oh, those doors. Oh, yes. that I, I agree. That and, and like the alien kind of thing too yeah which is what i'm going off of because i've seen that I'm, I'm very much trying to go for a dark 
space. Um, realistically, what I'm actually doing is I spent some time, because like I said, this isn't my board game. Um, and not to say that, you know, if I saw this sitting on the shelf, I wouldn't buy it because I sure the hell would. Um, right. But I also wasn't aware of the board game until Mike asked me to paint it. Um, so it says it is a compliment. Okay. Uh, I assumed. But so one, I'm a big fan of the alien movies. Two, um, I spent some time going through the game itself and the artwork that's included in the rule book and that sort of thing. Uh, the box, and like I said, you can see the artwork behind Ty as well. I'm using the artwork of the game as my main color. Ah! As my main color schemes. <laughs> so that, you know, when you pull out the game, it doesn't look like it doesn't go together. Uh, but the board and everything is is really beautifully done. Um, it's colorful without, you know, it's it's not you know rainbow colors, but it 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 has pops, you know. So I wanted to make sure that I gave, and it's, I mean, it's aliens, but it's still very realistic looking. It's it's not cartoony at all. So I wanted to stay on that feeling, I guess, is a, is a good way of saying it. That atmosphere. That atmosphere. That's what I mean. The atmosphere of that. Which is actually better in a case of that's realistically painting and, and drawing is, is more in my realm anyway. Which is why I enjoy painting monsters because in reality they're not there so i can paint however i want and say it paint i'm painting in realistic tones and such well this is what a minotaur would look like if it was real you're wrong <laughs> prove me wrong <laughs> and then they bring a minotaur and i run screaming like a little bitch <laughs> screaming you're right you're right i'm sorry <laughs> it's fair it's fair Please don't bring a minotaur to my house. I don't actually need proof. Thank you very much. Anyway, Ty, you can get us back on subject now that I've completely derailed us to minotaurs. <laughs> uh, well, I got to go to the, through the list. Even though there's only a couple of us working on this right now, I mean... Trucking through it. Yeah, we, we got a lot of stuff to get started with in any case. I think story-wise, as we travel through making this world that we're all going to have new ideas about how to solve unique problems. Um, but what we've done today kind of makes me happy that we've gone through the problems that we all know that we would expect if we just throw in that element of there are scary creatures that want to potentially eat us. And we have to worry about each other still. And then we have to worry about the environment. That's, that's kind of what we did today already is uh, going over those obvious problems and i think we'll come up with uh with more problems that we need to to build things to solve yeah that habitation that mobile habitation the the mobile home of the plane <laughs> but we have a lot in here i'm pretty happy with that I could have sworn I just heard thunder or something. Well, that's probably my gut, because as eat. you mentioned, I didn't eat, so now I'm hungry. <laughs> I ate a little bit of something this morning. And I probably already said it, but you are doing an amazing job on those doors. Not in a surprising way i'm not saying it like oh my gosh you're actually doing what no you're you're doing well as you might expect <laughs> it's okay ty doesn't matter what you say i'll still cook dinner <laughs> i 
Was that on the table? Now I'm more worried. I wasn't even thinking that. What? That you might stop feeding me. Oh. Yes, that's always on the table. <laughs> Along with my, my favorite punishment of I just stopped talking. Which you would think everyone would be so happy. Oh, look, Dawn's going to finally shut up. It drives him crazy. I can't stand that. If somebody's not going to talk to me, I just don't want to hang out with them. I'm that kind of person. Um... You want to move us on to when we live there, when we're set up, what kind of buildings we have there? That's kind of what, I, yeah, I, so I've got listed already from what we were mentioning earlier. We've got barns and windmills. And I do see these as being mostly stone. I would agree. I'll just, I'm going to write that as a general note that, you know, there's some wood out there, but it's not big forested area everywhere. You might have a copse near you. And because everything's bigger in this world, as I mentioned before, a copse might be the size of a small forest here on Earth. You know, and I actually was thinking about the turtle the other day and how, you know, we were saying how it's big enough to even have, you know, wood growing, woods and stuff like that on its back. I was like, that might be a, an industry right there of, you need logs? I got logs because I grow them up here. <laughs> yeah, but you mean like on the plane or? No, like the turtle the big giant turtle, oh. like you can grow trees on its back, right? Right. So people plant forests, oh, cut them maybe, down. Maybe it's something, in, rather than just trees, because trees take a while, right? But one of the bamboo. things we're working, yeah, here on Earth is bamboo forests because they're more sustainable and yeah. faster growing. So maybe that is something that, you know, you take up a handful of bamboo seeds out with you and you grow yourself a bamboo forest when you get to where you're going and you, that's your wood supply. That's your firewood. That's your building wood. That's... Yeah. Uh, so these are different notes we I have to make off of what you just said, though. So, so first bonsai of all... Bonsai tree spelling. I, I don't know if that's spelled right, but I know what you mean is a bonsai tree. It's like this. You don't mean the little ones like this, right? <laughs> Look, I grew a tree this big! I mean, it's a bonsai tree. It doesn't grow very much bigger. <laughs> Um, it's okay, Sawdust. He's wrong. We're right. <laughs> okay. I kind of so like... I, so I, oh, I'm sorry. I kind of like the steel color that I made for the bot base of this better than the base of this. So I'm going to, while I've got my color out here, I'm going to go ahead and kind of recolor. Oh, oops, I accidentally pressed the button. <laughs> ah, the button! I'm done. Well, so I added a note here that generally speaking, people will build out of stone and cob. Cob obviously is because they have plenty of grasses. And the dog oxen. Yeah, and, and it's probably not a terrible uh, search, I would imagine. And in my imagination, that there there's ways that in most places in the plane, they can find different lime based rock outcroppings and stuff like that or something similar uh but cob i mean you could just throw you don't have to have lime for the mortar necessarily you, i think you can just build out of straw and and mud you just need the water to add to it why, why were you giving me that look well what i thought cob was the stuff you made out of dung and mud no and... so so that's sort of a at this point it's a myth the the reason we find dung in old cob is just simply because they were using the cows to mix it they were mixing with it right it, it wasn't necessary at all it's just the cows leaving what they were going to leave but i'm not talking about historically Hi, i'm ghosty. talking about now people are building people do that now because it's become a myth that oh okay gotcha but, Hi, but it's not at all necessary no okay. all, all you need is the straw the mud and the the water 
and then people will mix lime in there too i i think i may just be thinking about a lime coat though um where you break down lime rock and use it as a, a wash a lime lime wash yeah. to help preserve it though i think it, it's a good coating oh uh, so anyway yeah so cob is one of those those things that i think it would be a fairly even common. easier than finding the stone yeah to build these bars but i don't think rocks and stone are going to be hard at all you're going to pull them out of your agdal field for instance as yeah. you're working uh do, do, do. so what was the note i was going to make though sorry Thing, uh, oh i was going to add to the giant turtle trader guy and no worries about being late at all Oh, I'm in plants. Derp. Here we go. Okay. Actually, I'm just going to add it as a trader note. Because it, it doesn't have to be... I'll add it to the trader note because it seems more important there. Which is above here. Traders and farmers would be thinking about what you're suggesting that you might bring... A way of producing your own uh... lumber, bamboo type plant, right? Yeah. Traveling salesman. I am just trying to get all of the grading done now since I've got this color out and I like I like how that's looking so I want to hurry up and get all my bases done with that color. Ow! Stop being so stabby! For the most part these parts are fairly flexible because they're not resin. Let me move my thumb. They're not resin, so I can move them around, but they still are stabby. We're just sitting here being quiet while Ty finds where he's typing. Sorry, I don't want to lose the notes because I was no. already leaving that subject. And I think that's a good idea. I mean, as much as storage is important to your your giant tiny house that you're dragging around on the plane, I think things like this that you may pick a place, you know that you may pick a place on the plane that your family doesn't have access to wood. So to sort of supplement those to be able to build doors on your barn structure or your windmill or whatever you might build the main structure might be built out of the stone you find but you're going to yeah. want a door on the windmill if you don't even if you don't want it on your barn um so this is i likes it too i was on another screen ordering doordash i'm i'm back to... <laughs> now i'm getting hungry damn it uh, what you order from DoorDash? Make it worse for him. <laughs> While you're typing that out, since Goldie showed up late, and Goldie is, of course, another big crop forager for us, so I'm going to go over what we've been talking about. Hopefully, Ghosty's still around. Oh, uh, sawdust grilled trout with corn grits where the hell did you get that places around here that do doordash is like mcdonald's taco bell well it worked i'm i'm getting hungrier just hearing that right damn that sounds good i haven't even had grits in forever like a long time yeah well it's not exactly like we can just buy grits so for golden ghosty or anybody else that's popped on even though i know we're getting kind of towards 
the end maybe dawn i don't, I don't know in any case this no is idea. what we've been talking about i'm literally over here with painting a million different things so i could sit here for the next you know five hours so when and where things end or stop that's on you my dude sada says uh my pinky was in the air when i ordered <laughs> i would like grits and trout <laughs> <laughs> So what we've been talking about is predominantly the land ships. We've been sort of developing sort of those ideas. Uh, oh, well, the state of the plane, there was only the two things. Sorry, I haven't gotten notes out there yet from the last two crowd forging streams, but that will hopefully be soon. And I started writing yesterday because right now the only time that I have to write is going to be on the weekends. Um, so I started writing the first scene for the first short story on the plane. Uh, today we've been talking about land ships, so structures, the, the land ship structure is made up of big metal boxes. You have a main living area, dog ox enclosure on the front, maybe a tool shed, three by three or four by four attached to the back. Uh, during travel, they'll use a crank in the middle of the main room that, uh, has brought the wheels down. And then until you get to wherever your farm's going to be, and then you'll use that crank again to bring those wheels up back into the skin or the inner hull of the land ship. Uh, during travel, everyone kind of has a job. You've got somebody that's going to direct the dog oxen, which most most of the time you're probably going in a straight line. But, you know, if you have to turn or to get them to go or whatever, right? Uh, everybody else is probably either cleaning inside the land ship or walking on the outsides to do lookout uh, as sand as sawdust rather suggested you know you might have one or two people on top of the structures helping to keep lookout as well <clears throat> some of the ideas that have been brought forth are a decoy launcher so if you imagine like a little ball something that looks like a little critter on a rope that'll get shot out by some spring-loaded gun hear you that would be like something maybe use in the morning to, to just check you know that you know that predators are going to chase after something like that if they are hunkered down next to your vessel or waiting for you to come out so that may attract them away from your vessel so you can see them uh and then you just retract it back in with a crank we've talked about rve like an RV style wall structure so that once you get to wherever you live, mainly you can extend these extra rooms out. So maybe your kitchen gets extended out or a food processing processing area or an office or any number of things. So that once you get there, certainly, and, and maybe a bit while you're on your way, if you stop on the way, uh, a way to expand that tiny on average 25 by 25 feet of your main living space uh in this first story which is introducing tara olds and rex i think it's grossman but I'm, i don't remember for sure in any case tara and rex are getting introduced in this first story where i've already talked about periscopes uh peep slots and mirrors on the corner on the exterior corners of your land ship to help sort of secure you and and let you wake up in the morning and and check outside before you walk outside kind of things so the terrifying example that sawdust gave was like a uh a polar bear polar bear hanging out on your roof waiting for you to walk out and that's just so beyond effed up <laughs> i think it's I'm... great uh so we have uh hvac systems we're working on a little bit today sort of uh you have slitted vents uh that on the bottom might be they're facing down and then you can cover them with some wet membrane or cloth or something like that just for summertime cooling and then more slotted vents on the roof so that uh the air is going to travel from the ground. Also, uh, wind power uh, fans 
right? So maybe a fan sort of directing that airflow, force it up through their wet membrane with cool air and then out the top so that uh, heat can, can escape. Uh, as well as just regular ceiling fans that are maybe, so you have like a wind turbine of some kind on your uh, roof that's powering instruments, tools on the inside that are also fans, you know. We talked about doors that might be like uh, on a naval vessel where you have the, the round wheel crank to lock your doors at night and unlock in the morning. Uh, we discuss sleeping inside of the land ship where you're going to use, a lot of them are going to use hammocks, just rope hammocks because they're easy and they're cheap. Uh, and that sometimes maybe it's more like on a ship, like on a naval vessel again, where you have the the beds that hinge down from the walls but can be put up during the day to allow more room uh, to work and live in that space. And now we were just starting to talk about other structures like barns and windmills. And then, <laughs> shit. <laughs> I don't know why that got me so good on that one. Anyway. Too quiet for too long. It's, I guess that's what it was. I was lulled into safety, thinking I was safe. Uh, so generally speaking, people will build out of stone and cob for these kinds of buildings. Though there may be, and for specific reasons, there may be other ways that, that people might build other... <laughs> buildings Read uh, ghosty's comment uh sorry i had to do something but what are we talking about today oh <laughs> we're talking about the land ship and uh, he literally just went through a big explanation <laughs> that's okay people can watch it later um and but uh, but yeah we were talking about the land ship we're kind of moving off of that now and talking about other structures that once you arrive to wherever you're deciding to to build your agdal farm that there are other buildings that you would need. Um, like a windmill. Like a windmill or barn for a granary. That <clears throat> You have to keep that generally safe. So that's what I was going to do. I was going to add a note for that. That these, these structures are often built inside the fields. Because of the other things we've talked about before that, that are sort of built into securing the field. Um, that maybe these things, they're housing things that you're not necessarily as worried about keeping yourself safe like you do with your land ship. You know, you're not worried about what it's like as much while you're sleeping. So the general security is taken up by Barry Cousins and the, uh, what did we call them, the... The field pups. And those, the pea shooters. Those kinds of things. The pea shooters, the, you know, that there's other things that keep the field safe. So these utility buildings that you might build don't need peepholes and stuff like that because you're not expecting, at least, you're not expecting to need to be in there overnight to protect yourself. There's no reason to be sorry. Absolutely. Uh, the only things you might have missed is that uh, the state of the plane we mentioned. I haven't moved the notes over yet to Discord, but I will do that soon from the, the last two um, crowd forging streams. And that we started writing the first short, short story last night. We have the first scene written, at a, a rough draft of the first scene written. Um, so thinking we're going to build mostly like a little bit of wood, mostly stone and cob. I can see people saying maybe they are in an area of the plain where it's just very soil rich without a lot of stone nodules in the way. And in that case, they're going to build out of cob probably mostly as long as they've got a good water source they're, certainly they're gonna it's gonna be easy for them to get grasses and straws to to strengthen that cob too uh 
and then a little bit of wood if they happen to be near a copse. Very basic structures, right? But so what else are we thinking then? We've got barns, we've got maybe windmills to, to crush grains and <clears throat> bone. And bone? Yeah, oh. you could you make bone, bone meal. A bone meal. Yeah, take I the gotcha. bones okay. from the the animals that you've killed. To be... I was not even thinking about that. See, that's that's why I need help with this sort of thing. What were you thinking I meant by bones? Well, I was thinking like bone mill, like a necromancer spell or something. I wasn't thinking about bone meal. Mm -mm, bone for, meal. For planting even, right? We use bone meal for fertilizer. Uh, okay. Go ahead. Here, I'm going to switch to another screen to read from. So Sawdust says, oh, wow, since this endeavor is generational, you would need to breed these rock dogs, the land ship haulers, uh, in order for your grandkids to have the ability to leave. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. And probably that's one of your opportunities to work with other farmers, too, even though it takes a while to get together. And maybe you only do that once a year so that you can trade your stock with theirs to make healthier breeds mm -hmm. right uh ghosty says so i've been meaning to think how do the land ships move uh are they a carriage so it moves in the ground on wheels or does it kind of drag or does it float so it's a mainly it's wheels that you'll crank a wheel either in the middle or maybe off to the side of the main room that can uh, retract and detract that's not right that can extend and retract the wheels out of the inner hull and it's a two skin hull so you have an inner skin and an outer skin hull with a sort of air hull in between them and the wheels go in that hull as well <clears throat> so that that's how the, the wheels work once you get to wherever your farm is going to be you retract them and Unless there's some big reason to move your home, your home probably, your landship won't move again until your family decides, all right, we're leaving the plane. Though, like we talked about earlier, there could be reasons that you're like, well, we sort of moved further that way with the fields, so we're going to move the home to the middle area of the fields now or something like that, because we sort of feel like we're on the end of our growth. Um. And then there's also things where I think they would devise skis, skids kind of off the front and maybe even off the back or something to help with things like crossing a stream or a gully. So in a sense, they could be dragged for short distances to get the wheels back oh. until the wheels gain purchase again. Gotcha. Hmm. Um, and if anybody has ideas about other ways of, because the plane is flat, but it's not perfectly flat, right? You might have areas where you have small hills, gullies, of course, rivers and streams that they have to find the best places to, to cross those, uh, impediments. Let me switch back over here. Those doors are looking great. See what oh, the doors are done. That's it. So we've got two different versions of doors. So the one has the the red light there to to make sure everyone's you know not supposed to be there, and the other one has that blue, you know, shiny up at the top. And they're all damaged. They're all beat the hell in back, which the models came that way. So I was really impressed by that. So now, basically, I have two of these guys. So I want to make sure I paint them at the same time. I have two of these guys this this one this one and here move out of the way this guy are all done already but i have no behave Let's see i've got one two yeah, it looks like i have two of each model so like all of these guys are going to be kind of pretty much look like this uh have all that very similar paint scheme but 
put them in their groups back here. These two big guys that I was had in the front, they are obviously much larger than the others and more comparable to the queen herself. Oh, yeah. So what I was thinking is the queen is going to have a lot more of of this shade with her because it really kind of brings the board game itself to the game pieces. Um, everybody ha is going to have some of the purple. Everybody is going to have some of the blue because that's what these are back here and the evil chrome. That's, that's the main set of colors is those three colors. But I'm thinking with these two, since they're bigger than these guys and more powerful and not as big as her i'm thinking that just like her they have another color that kind of comes with them and i was debating between because i mean like i said it's it, everybody's gonna have these but i was debating whether or not just to add hints of this color that's going to be the queen or just saving that color off just for the queen and maybe adding a different shade to them because I don't like the red. I'm not doing the red. I know that already. So basically, I'm just going through and trying to pick what I want. I know I want them to look slightly different. I'm just trying to decide... How I'm going to come up, go about that. I have a greedy gold. There are way more paints than what we can see in front of you right oh, now. Oh, sorry. I just you noticed that. Like, I don't even see the one yeah. you just placed there. Greedy so, gold. These three are guaranteed. That's going to happen because that's the paint scheme across all of them. The queen is going to have this added in and what i'm considering is those two are going to get highlights of this just barely so it's like you can kind of see those guys don't have any of it then these guys who are closer to her have some of it and then she has it heavily i think that's my option hi gareth son of a bitch hello gareth oh, i like the idea saw uh yeah i haven't read that yet okay I'm debating, so go back to your stuff, and I will continue debating here. Okay. So, uh, have a... I think I like The that. note about the corrals, that would be a, definitely a generic structure that, for the livestock things we've talked about, for anything like that, I mean, most of the time I wouldn't see it them keeping the animals in there with them, except that this first story, I, I know there's some... There, there are events that are going to occur in this first short story that we're working on that that comes up as a, a way of handling problems. Um, I'm so, going with the green, with the add touches of this so they're a, between her and them. That's what I'm going to do. So leaving the plane, this is what we're talking about here. When people come back to civilization, this is from Sawdust. Um, let me switch again too. It's easier to read. When people come back to civilization, there can be talk about culture shock. Not only have these people never seen a large city, the stories they have heard passed down are no longer accurate. That is an excellent point. Sorry for the sideways comment, not on subject. Well, I mean, we're talking about traveling on the plane and, and I think that's an important thing for when they're leaving the plane because you're right even if they've been to the largest city on the plane which i'm modeling off of our small city that we live in uh, well no it's a little bigger than that i guess our city we have around fifteen thousand people we live in a rural city here in real life i see the largest city on the plane only being about twice that size that they have maybe thirty thousand people uh that they've They've been able to make an industry to make a city, but they are so remote from everywhere else. Even though you can say that major cities off of the plane, 
where they might have hundreds of thousands or even a million people or something like that in a maybe, maybe. They're still fairly remote from other cities just because of the size of the world. I can see suburbs and smaller towns and stuff coming out from those cities to where they don't really feel remote at all. Whereas if you leave one of these cities on the plane, there's only a handful of them that, uh, yeah, you're years between everything else. <laughs> uh, anyway, yeah, that, that's a good note. And I'm going to add that as a note to farmers in particular, although it could apply, you know, it, a buyer comes out for 20 to 30 years onto the plane and maybe they've had kids while they're out there. The, the buyer may have been 16, 17 years old when they entered the plane, but when they come off, you know, they're in their forties or something. They've had a family while they're out there. Yeah. It's like that. Um, well, I won't refer to the movie specifically because I want to hear it. Um, but, uh, you know, th there will be children who have, who have never seen anything, you know, they've never seen the blue sky. They've never seen the, you know, huh? they're, they're because they were raised out on the plane. They'll have never seen a city. And I was just like, you know, like the kids in the movie who have never seen a blue sky. Yeah. Yeah. Like I said, even if they've been to the the biggest city on the plane, it's only got around 30,000 people. When they arrive at a, a city that's got half a million people and has suburbs that are larger than that city of 30,000, that's going to be huge change to them. Culture shock. Right. For sure. If I can find my... Ah, okay. And that's kind of a reason, too, why some people may just like I well you know yeah we could leave but I don't know what I would do if I wasn't doing this so they just stay and you know this is what I've it, always known pushes it to the next generation that might leave you know it again All right. Feels so good to be making progress on this thing again. Uh, so, Ghosty asks, so what would be the point of living away from the city if people can live in the city? Well, the, so the, the cities are actually around the plateau the only cities on the plain are around the plateau where the Agdal plant can be grown. Um, so even, you know, one edge of this plateau to the other is a, it's a couple years. It's not maybe a year and a half, two years, maybe three years. It's not the full 10 years that it takes to travel from the edge of the plain to the center of the plain where the plateau is. But uh, the reason would just be because you're a farmer and you're out there and your patch that you've sort of claimed um growing your uh your agdal farm right uh for people in the city i think they've maybe found other industries there could be a smaller things that we develop later mining operations and certainly traders will focus on cities because they can pick up buyers rather will focus on cities because they don't want to travel to some remote area of the, the plateau and they can still buy from traders who are willing to travel out to a remote farm where they know buyers won't go so that they can buy Agdal berries and bring them back to trade to the buyers in the cities. Um, I mean, it really boils down to you can't get this plant anywhere else. So if you want it, Somebody's got to go out and grow it. Right. And and like I said, there could be things that we develop later on that, you know, gems or crystals or 
metals or something that exist in other places on the plane. The sort of general reason why people won't live it don't want to live in a city now because of desire or requirements to be able to get something, you know. Yeah. I mean, you'll, you'll always have, no matter where you are, you'll have those people who want to live in the big city. And then you'll have those people who, who don't want that life. Even if they don't want to farm Agdal or mine or do anything else, they just don't want to live in that city. They yeah. don't want to be in that environment. So you, you'll always have the, the variations. Yeah, regardless the, the... of... Sorry. No, you're fine. Let's say regardless if they have incentives or not. The incentive is, I don't want to live like this. Yeah, and I think that that's it. You have the variable of people and the things that they want for their own life and the variable of what you need and where you might have to go to get it. Yeah. I mean, I wouldn't... If I had to, I would live in a big city. But I don't have to. I don't want to. Uh, so Gareth says, I assume these berries don't really rot since these trips take so long or is it just the juice and seeds they need from the berries sorry if i've missed that you have not missed that it's not fully developed i think i what i the one that i like so far is that we're going to uh to process them to uh an even smaller form like a, a dehydrated powdered form or something like that that the berries are sort of changed into for the purpose of transport and that mostly they're processed into the narcotic off of the plane that there's maybe in the cities they do a little bit of that but for the most part the powder from the berries is what uh the buyers sell and yeah. to some extent the farmers themselves when they leave the plane uh ghosty says i think it'd be a great idea to create some kind uh, or that people mine for much like how we still have large coal mines in the world i think a fuel source or could be really great for jobs and uh reasons to stay away from the cities yeah uh I, i've been trying to think of that too because as we've started writing obviously i'm gonna have to figure out what is this likely burnable fuel source for heating and cooking and stuff that would have to be something that's easy to get on the plane and i'm kind of leaning more and more towards a peat kind of uh, fuel source like uh they use in places like britain they certainly used to use uh and i know they use to a certain extent now something where they could basically dig for their fuel but wouldn't need a big trade thing backing them you know uh like coal outcropping coal mining and maybe in some places they actually do use specifically coal right but that uh peat would be some kind of a peat would be an easy thing for them to be able to go out and cut dig up you know or dig out I like that idea of it takes it away from, you know, okay, well, I'm living in the city and now I want to, I want to move. So now I have to find a place that's looking for a job. I could just, it's like almost going to start your own gold mine sort of idea. Yeah. Yeah. In a, innovative ways of being able to go out and get these resources and maybe get these resources and return them to the cities who are going to have a, a huge appetite for things like coal and wood and this maybe this peat thing or something like that yeah and for various other reasons not just necessarily for burning you know but as they're growing and developing new industries burning still going to be a big big reason for those sorts of things but building for wood and bamboo uh certainly burning for coal yeah 
but I, I know there's other things we can think of for this peat idea, for instance, you know, chemical reasons they might need it. I mean, we can make up something completely brand new too. Right. Yeah. That that's kind of what I was getting at, that oh, the science of this world has <laughs> Ow! gone in a different direction. So we can use the peat for some other reason. I do think I'm going to have to call it soon, Dawn. Yeah. Are you about ready? I mean, like I said, I'm just... I'm going to make some notes on the... Oh, it's raining. I don't even know when it started raining. Yeah, I don't know. The 3D printer's too loud. So. Well, I kept hearing little ticks every now and again. And I kept thinking, like, I looked over now and again, every now and again thinking, is it making just a weird noise? But... No, it was, I'm guessing that was the rain. Got wind power, doors sleeping. Here we go. I'm going to put the note here with the land ships because certainly they need fuel. But it can be a whole industry. We could develop a whole industry of people that are going out and collecting this for certainly the satellite plateau cities. Yeah. But also other places on the plane that bring these minerals and other products back to off of the plane where most people live on both sides of the plane. Uh, what do I need? I love metallics. Oh, kind of heat. It is wrong. Oh, don't worry about being late at all. I mean, it's realistically, you know, oh. anybody shows up whenever, like, we're happy. It, but yeah, I need to get these notes out there. <laughs> oh shite! I saw it coming. <laughs> yeah. I need to get these notes out there too. But I mean, like Ghosty's been out on the Discord already and stuff. We could certainly share any time there. Yeah. The, I mean, the idea is to do the crowd forging. It's fun to do it on stream, but you guys get ideas, man. Go slap them out there and we can discuss as we have time. Yeah, I mean, it, it really can be any time. And honestly, if Ty had eaten when I told him to, we'd probably be streaming longer. And, and you know, that's another thing of where these Sunday streams are kind of when... We have a Sunday open, and if, you know, th us starting at 3 o'clock is a little too early for everybody on a Sunday. Yeah, yeah. That's definite feedback we can take. Sure. We were thinking about moving our um, Wednesday stream back a little bit, maybe starting around 7 or 7.30. Yeah. Uh, As that well. provides other opportunities we can talk about later, too. Yes. But, you know, I'm just saying, like... Is there a mini-mystery today? No, not today. No, not today. Just on... Uh, technically, those are only supposed to be on Tuesdays, but we've been doing them on Wednesdays as well because, well, That's we fun. like to. But now we're almost out. <laughs> yes. So we want to spread it out. We only need six more people. We get six more followers, and we'll give them all away at once, as well as the big Brachiosaurus caravan thing, too. Gare says, well, I was playing Elden Ring, so that's my fault when you started. Oh, no, dude. Are you having play. fun? I know some people are complaining about bugs on Elden Ring. Obviously, I haven't played it yet. But, oh, it's but, some... but Tuesday, we'll be back definitely giving an, another yes. mini box, mystery mini box away. And I will be painting the um, drone from Lord of the Prince new release. Oh, yeah. That Somebody paid fun. for that one, didn't they, with their point? Uh, Ghosty, yeah, actually. Ghosty, Ghosty did? did. Yep. Well, in any case, we did go through a bunch of stuff, so if you get time, go back and... Oh, it's pretty solid on PS4. Yeah, I did hear it was better on the consoles. And I should be live tomorrow. Okay. Um, 
was I saying? I don't know. Go back. Yeah, if you get time, go back and 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 rewatch the stream to get some through some of the ideas. I will try and get all of the notes caught up very soon. And if you guys have other ideas about this, we don't have to be done right now. Developing land ships, I think, should be a big yeah that's... idea and, and a big idea that we're not even going over. Like what a rich guy's a yeah, super we went over rich a basic... person's land ship would be. We're like this is this is in general what land ships are expected to be like so we may be losing our stream anyway with the storm kicks up any higher than yeah. this i hear thunder uh ghosty says i'm so excited for the drone uh can't wait to see what you do uh voice is about 85 to 90 percent for gareth yeah good that's good ma'am i'm surprised it's taken this long that's a bummer but uh, i'm gonna switch over i've got notes now on all this other stuff we were talking about so I dawn you can kind of and I got this guy damn near done already because the dry brushing is so quick on these. Um, so, like, as a comparison, you can see on this one, I've just done the black base coat. We all, we did the silver on the bottoms. And then this one only has the purple done, but this one has the purple, the, I want to call it teal, as your magic. The royal purple teal is not a real color and the elven armor so this one has all of those colors so you can kind of see the difference between the two if i could spin them without them getting caught so you've got you know the shiny so realistically he is almost done but like let me get my brush back this part of his arm right here should and his hand should be black so I'll come back over with the black to kind of touch up where I hit. This part of his arm right here should be black. His hand should be black. Um, he's got some deep recesses right here that I missed with my base coat. So that needs to go back to black. Uh, I think there's a couple of little spots like right in here on his back needs to be black. And in his little tushy needs to be black. But other than that, that guy's done. Garrett, Garrett says please do post pics on Discord later so that he can... Uh get a good look at them oh i mean realistically these guys i've been i got these i will but um this is a board game set so i ain't done yeah I uh, long shot i guess we didn't mention that whenever people were showing up later it's from yeah. nemesis which is by uh, awaken realms so like this guy it, it's it's based on alien yeah. pretty much they can't say that but it is so like these three I had done previously. So these guys are all done. And we did finish all 12 of the doors. We have two different types of doors. Oops, sorry guys. Sorry, sorry, sorry. So we have two different types of doors. It's this and this. But they all have different sets of damage. Which I think is freaking awesome that it actually goes all the way through. That's great. So I had them base coated in black. Then I dry brushed the um, this new one. I will find it in a second, maybe. I dry brushed the rough iron over the whole thing. And then I did the weapon bronze to bring up the, the dented metal more, you know, bring it up higher. Sawdust has got to go. Thanks for hanging out, Sawdust. Hi, Sawdust. Big help today. And then I used the gun metal in the claw marks to make sure that they were highlighted. Kara says, I'm glad I'm not the only one who apologizes to my minis when I drop them. <laughs> well, they're so cute and cuddly. I feel bad for being abusive. But basically, the walls, or the doors, not walls, the doors are the combination of these three paints. Ooh. I have that so out of focus. Tyler, help me with that. Oh, uh, no moment. Let's see. So the doors are all generally painted with these three. And then that wall has a touch of that. And the other wall has, or I keep calling it a wall, it's a door. The other door has a touch of this. I'm like really off center here. How's that? 
is better. There we go. But basically, that's what I went through trucking through for the most of the stream was I got all 12 doors done. So. Kara says they look amazing. Yeah, I this game is amazing. Before I picked any of my colors, I flipped through the entire book and looked at all of the artwork. Mike and... probably thinks we were just trying to keep the game so we could play it all the time. But <laughs> incidentally, I'm thinking once you give it back to him, we need to buy it so that we can play it. Yeah, because realist, I'm like the game, he gave me the game to paint for him. Nothing's even punched out yet. They have never played this game. But basically, when I was looking through everything, all of the artwork and everything, these were the colors that really kind of popped out at, from the, the board game itself. So I wanted to make sure I stayed in, in kind of those realms. So that's where the monsters are. So that's, that's where I got the color scheme. Uh, but I have... This is my reward piece. She will be the last piece I paint. She is the queen. And once I have everything else done, I will paint her. But I still have all the other monsters. There's the player characters. There's these weird platform things that I, I'm not sure. Gameplay-wise, I'm not sure what they're for. Um... So there, there's still quite a bit to paint for this game. There's even little, like you can see she's actually holding a little one. Let me turn it around. You can see she's holding a little one right here. Uh, there's actual little ones that I need to paint as well. There's little babies coming out from underneath. Um, Ghosty says, I got to head out for tonight. Uh, sorry for my short time here. Not at all. Doesn't matter, see dude. See you on Tuesday. Yeah. Yep. See you on then. Tuesday. See you then. <laughs> Just whack myself so yeah i mean it's there there's a, a lot more to paint but i plan on just trucking through as much as i can because i want to paint her she's awesome such a good killer alien mommy definitely yes she just needs a good cuddle <laughs> <laughs> well yeah. i think we're done so thank you guys for hanging out and, yes very uh, much so part get these notes caught up donald toss some pictures <laughs> there. shit i got him <laughs> Dawn. uh but we'll get that caught up so if you guys have any ideas later or any of this inspires you if you see this later then definitely come and share and crowdforge yeah. with us uh 